In this video, we're going to be going in-depth with Sega Saturn emulation on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. Alright everybody, time for an update to the Sega Saturn setup guide. Sega Saturn has become one of my favorite systems to emulate, and I'm so happy that it works so well on Xbox Series X and S consoles. Now, this guide is assuming that you have already installed RetroArch using one of my provided methods. If not, check out the RetroArch Xbox playlist in the description below for one of those setup guides. But let's go ahead and dive in. To get started with Saturn emulation, you will need to source Saturn BIOS files for your specific region. If you want to play Japanese Saturn games, you need to find a Japanese Saturn BIOS, and it needs to be named Sega underscore 101.bin. For US and European BIOS files, they need to be named MPR-17933.bin. And if you have extra BIOS files for games like King of Fighters 95 or Ultraman, you will need to provide those as well if you plan to play these two games, and they need to be labeled as shown here on the RetroArch docs page. Once you've sourced your BIOS file and have it named accordingly, we just need to add it to our RetroArch system folders. So if you moved your RetroArch system folder onto USB, just open up your USB drive, open up your system folder, and then drag it right on in. If you are running an internal install still, open up your Durango FTP app, and start the server. And now using your preferred method, either an FTP app or Windows Explorer, however you have it set up, open up your Xbox file share, enter your local folder, find your RetroArch folder, local state, system, and drag that BIOS file right on inside. And once those BIOS files are placed, we're ready to begin game setup. Now, Sega Saturn games can come in multiple formats, the preferred format being BinQ for just your standard Saturn game. But older formats like CCD do work, and if you want to compress them, you can convert them over to Chud format. Now up to this point, I've been running all my Sega Saturn games in standard BinQ format, but for this video, I want to compress them down to Chud just to save a little bit of space. So if you would like to do the same, down in the description below will be this Q slash GDI to Chud zip file that you can download. And once you have it downloaded, just get it extracted. It's in zip format, so any program should be able to do this. But once that's extracted, open it up and you'll see two files. There's a bat file and an executable file. So just add this to your Sega Saturn games folder and run the bat file. And it will find all of your Saturn games that are in BinQ format and convert them into Chud. And it will find them regardless if they're in subfolders or not, which is awesome. So just let the program run and do its thing and we'll be back momentarily. And once that conversion process is finished, you can just press any key to exit out of that. And you can delete your queued GDI and Chudman files as well as your source folders if you so choose. Now, Command & Conquer here is a multi-disc game, so I want to talk about getting a multi-disc game set up here real quick. So I'm actually going to put these two files back into a Command & Conquer subfolder. I like that it makes organization look a little bit neater. But I could get rid of my original... Q and bin files here real quick. But to get multi-disc games to show up in your RetroArch playlist as a single game file, we need to make an M3U file. So to do this, you need to create a text document and name it after the game. And once that text document is made, open it up. And we just need to paste the entire file name of all the discs that are included with that game, including extensions. So for whatever reason, your extensions aren't showing up, under Windows, you can click on this View tab, and you need to make sure the file name extensions checkbox is ticked here. Copy in all of the file names. And once you have those, go ahead and save your text document. And now we just need to rename our text document M3U instead of .txt. So it'll get mad at you for changing the extension on Windows. Just tell it yes, that's good. But there we go, that is the prep work for multi-disc games. So if you have things like Panzer Dragoon Saga, you just add in all four of those discs and you're good to go. One more thing to note about M3U files, if you are leaving your games in binq format, make sure that you enter the name of the Q files, plus the extension. But that does it for our Saturn game prep work. Now we just need to put our Saturn games folder onto our preferred storage medium. So I am using USB, so I'm just going to copy my Sega Saturn games folder into my USB games folder. 
if you're running in dev mode and running your games off of the internal SSD, go back into your Xbox file share, S drive, program files, Windows apps, find your RetroArch folder with the X64 at the end, your made games folder, and then you can drag your Sega Saturn games right on in. But with everything in place, we're ready to move over to RetroArch. So back over on your Xbox, if you're using USB, make sure you got that drive put back in place. And we are ready to begin loading up Saturn content. So one method of doing so is to go to load content and navigate to the directory you have your Saturn game stored in. If you're under retail mode using USB, they should be under D. Dev mode under USB should be under E. And then if you're running from internal SSD, just follow that S program files, Windows apps, RetroArch folder, games folder directory. But you could go in, find your Saturn games folder. Choose a game, choose a core, tell it to run. Now, I personally don't like this method. It's a little too long-winded, so I like to make a game's playlist instead. So head down to import content. And if you converted your games into chud format, you will need to do a manual scan. If they're still in binq format, you might be able to get away with a scan directory. But manual scan, content directory, navigate to where your games are stored. System name, press right on your D-pad to navigate down to Sega, and find the Sega Saturn. Default core, same thing, right on the D-pad to go down to Sega, and in this tutorial we are covering Beetle Saturn. It has the best accuracy of all the Saturn cores still, but it doesn't have fancy features like upscaling. For that, you will be more interested in Yaba Sanshiro or Yaba Us. Now for this first scan, I'm going to turn scan recursively off, so that way it doesn't scan my two Command & Conquer game files. And I'm going to tell it to start. Now, to get multi-disc games to show up, what I like to do now is turn scan recursively back on, so it'll search those subfolders, but we're going to set a file extension for M3U specifically. This way it will only pick up the M3U file that I have in those subfolders. And with those options set, start the scan. And now I have a new Sega Saturn playlist here on the left. My Command & Conquer game entry is showing up as one single game. And all my other game files are here as well. But to play a game, you just need to go down to one, choose it, and tell it to run. And if everything is placed properly, you'll be greeted by your Sega Saturn BIOS startup screen. And then you can begin enjoying your Sega Saturn games. Now there is a lot more to talk about when it comes to Sega Saturn emulation, so let's go ahead and start off with controller options. So heading into your RetroArch Quick Menu with your preset hotkey that you set during initial setup, if you head down to the Controls tab here, Port 1 Controls, under the device type you can change between a number of different Saturn controllers. Now, a lot of these aren't going to be that interesting on the Xbox version of RetroArch, but the 3D control pad will be of interest to some of you that like to play games like Panzer Dragoon 2 or other 3D control pad enabled games. This way you can play your games with the thumbstick instead of just the D-pad. Now, not every game was compatible with the 3D control pad, so you will need to uh, make sure you have control pads selected for those games. But if you are playing a 3D control pad enabled game, you can select the 3D control pad, and then back out of the controller options, and you can save those as a game remap file, so that way every time you load up a Saturn 3D controller game, it'll be set and ready to go for you without affecting your other Saturn titles. Now the next thing I want to talk about is how to change discs in multi-disc Saturn games. So for this example, I only have Command & Conquer. It's not the best example, but it gets the point across. But I am loaded up into disc 1 here, which is the GDI campaign disc, but if I wanted to play the Brotherhood of Nod missions, what we're going to do is go back into our RetroArch Quick Menu. And we're going to press B real quick because we need to change some settings within RetroArch. So press B again and head up to the Settings tab. From here, head down to User Interface. I can't read. And we're going to turn off pause content when not active and pause content when menu is active. This helps the disc change register more accurately within the Xbox version of RetroArch. And with those options set, head back up to main menu, quick menu, press up on your D-pad, click on overrides and save the core override. 
This way, these options will be in effect every time you load up a Saturn game, but it won't mess with any other cores that might not necessarily need it. You could also save it as a game override for only multi-disc games. Your choice. But once the override is saved, just back out, and you'll see a nice little tab here that says Disk Control. Going into this option, press A on Eject Disk, and you can see that it booted me to the Saturn main menu here. Perfect. Now, a new current disk index option has appeared with my selected disk in place. So I'm just going to tell it to move it over to the Brotherhood of Nod disk. And then I'm going to tell it to insert the disk. And the emulated Saturn picked up on the disk swap. And now I could start my Brotherhood of Nod campaign disk. And there we go. We have switched over to the bad guys. So that process again, disk control, eject your disk. You can press A on the current disk index to see all of your disks within your M3U file, press A on the one you want to choose, and then press A on insert disk. And then you can start the application. But now let's go ahead and talk about the core options available to us within Beetle Saturn. So heading into your RetroArch quick menu, head down to options. And our first tab is for video options. And our first option is to set a horizontal overscan mask, so this will just let you hide garbage data that appears around the border of your screen if needed. Then you can adjust initial scan line and last scan line. And the final option is to enable horizontal blending, which is a blurring effect. And so this will just kind of apply a nice little blurring filter to your Saturn image. You can see it taking effect in the background there. It kind of softens up those sharp rough pixels. So personal preference on if you want to enable this one or not. Next, we have input options. So you can enable a six player adapter on port one or two or both if you want to. Then we have allow opposing directions on the D-pad. This isn't really going to be useful for just traditional gameplay. Next, you can configure the analog stick dead zone on the 3D control pad. I like to set this down to five or 10% personally, but personal preference on that one. Set it, see if it feels good to you, adjust accordingly. And then same thing with the trigger dead zones. These ones, I typically just set to 0%, I don't really need them. And we don't really need to worry about mouse or gun sensitivity because we can't really use those on the Xbox version of RetroArch as of this video, so just too bad. Next, cartridge and memory card options. So this is where you can select what type of cartridge is inserted into your emulated Saturn. So auto detect is set by default, you can set it to none, you can set it to a backup memory cart, the extended RAM carts, and then those special carts for King of Fighters and Ultraman if you place those BIOS files in your system folder. Now by default, every game now gets um, their own separate save files for the internal memory and for backup cartridges, which is awesome. But if for any reason you want to turn on a shared memory card or internal memory, you can turn it on here. I like to turn on the shared backup memory personally, just in case there's something that can talk to another game. This way I can save it to the backup memory cartridge and then access it from the other game. But for internal memory, I leave that disabled. Otherwise, you have to worry about managing save space, and that's just really obnoxious. Next option, system region. You can set where your Saturn is from here. It should work with auto detect, but if it doesn't, you can manually set your region. Next, you can change the BIOS language. Next, CD image cache. If you want to have your game load completely into the Xbox's memory before starting, you can enable this option. It will come at the cost of increased startup times, but you don't have to worry about your uh, storage speeds affecting your Saturn gameplay. Next, mid-frame input synchronization. On Xbox Series X and S, you can turn this option on. It should help with input latency, but it does come at the cost of increased CPU load, but for Xbox Series X and S, that should not be a problem. And finally, automatically set RTC on game load. Leave this one on. And that does it for our core options. If there are options you want to have set for some games but not others, such as uh, your cartridge slot being set to King of Fighters or Ultraman or something like that, you can head up to Manage Core Options and save them as a Game Options file. That way, those settings apply to that game and none of your other Saturn games. Now, one last thing I want to talk about here real quick before we call it is shaders. Since Saturn emulation can't be upscaled, it is a perfect system to use shaders for because it can make things look really, really nice. But head into the shaders tab. If shaders are not enabled, you can press A to do so. And then we can begin loading up shader presets. So some of my favorites include CRT easy mode. Gives you just this nice basic uh, CRT mask. Looks pretty nice. Some other ones I've been really enjoying lately include CRT Royal, 
So gives it a nice old school look. Not may not be preferable to some, but I'm really been enjoying it lately. Then another one that I've been experimenting with on different systems lately is this guest um is this CRT guest Dr. Venom Max DR one. This one can be kind of hit and miss depending on the system, but for the most part it looks pretty decent. Now, as always, shaders are going to be something of personal preference. There's no right or wrong shader for your games. It's all going to depend on your own personal taste and the look you're going for. So go through them, find the one that you really enjoy, and run with it. But once you have the shader set how you want it, head back into the shader tab and click on this save button and save them as a core preset. So that way, every time you load up a Sega Saturn game, that shader will load with it. If you want to apply shaders for different games, you can also save them as game presets as well. But that's going to do it for Saturn emulation on the Xbox Series X and S. As always, if you happen to have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to try to help you out. But now if you could all do me a couple of huge favors here at the end of the video, if you haven't done so already, please hit that like or dislike button just depending on how much you like today's tutorial. And if you haven't already, hit that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new content goes live on the channel. I have tons of stuff coming your way, and I'd love to have you all along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running, and I am super grateful to each and every one of you who has done so. Thank you for being our champions. Y'all are amazing. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.